Hey everyone, welcome back to Wolfie Studio, and today I'm here with a brand new video for you guys. It is the one year anniversary of Riverdale ending, and that means I should probably do something to celebrate it, because Riverdale, as crazy as it show it was, you know, it had a special place in my heart, because it's something I watched from the beginning to the end, and there's a lot of times I loved it, a lot of times I hated it. But in the end, it's going to be a memorable show for me for years to come. It's something I'm going to like bring up when we talk about shows. Um, and yeah, so I kind of wanted, as this one-year anniversary, to rank the seasons. Seasons 1 through 7, least favorite to favorite. And I want to hear your guys' feedback. Um, I would say my list is interesting. I don't really know what the standard is. I mean... I do think people say that it gets worse as the seasons go on, so you might be surprised at some of this. Um, but let's just start. So in seventh place, we have season five. And to me, this was the weakest for many reasons. Um, I actually think it had so much potential with the time jump and really resetting everything. But I think I was most disappointed with how the show was unwilling to take risks and how they what made Archie wishy-washy again. They couldn't let him settle down into an actual relationship. That really frustrated me. Cheryl was super immature the entire season um, through a lot of things that she did. And yeah, I'm not even going to get into that. Um, I was not a big fan of her whole witchcraft storyline in the first place. Um, so the, the, yeah, and I was not a big fan of the Jughead storyline with the alcoholism and just all of that. And um, yeah, I, it was probably, like, my least favorite season for all those reasons. Um, I didn't like really any character. Every character annoyed me. Really, the only highlights were, one, Tony getting a bigger role, and two, I guess, Betty and Archie finally getting together at the end, but even that felt really rushed. So, yeah, no, I just thought season five was just not very good, and definitely the show at its weakest, um... But there were a few highlights, like the Hiram episode and the Josie and the Pussycats episode were both pretty strong, in my opinion. So number, um, I guess, in sixth place, we have season seven, um, you know, the final season of Riverdale, and it made it pretty low on my list. And I do, I did kind of like the idea of them, you know, kind of doing high school when they never did, you know, and getting to re-explore that side of the characters. But like... It, it happened too late and you know I wanted to like the season a lot more because there was some really good stuff like they covered a lot of very important issues in in season seven that I do appreciate that they did but to me I thought the first half of the season was strong the second half really fell off because it had things like the Betty and Veronica relationship that went nowhere Archie and Reggie having a threesome with Twyla Twist and things like that um, that were just awful, like terrible stuff, like the worst I've seen on the show. And I'm like, why are we wasting our time on this? And it basically led to nothing. And, oh, and Tabitha and how much they screwed her over as a character and, and making the core four be together at the end, like together, together was stupid. Not having really any couples besides Cheryl and Tony end up together. It was just very much a disapp disappointing last season for a show. Um, so yeah, just, and I, I don't think many people were a fan of it in the first place. So, so fifth place is number four, season four. Um, to me, I think this season started off very strong with the tribute to Luke Perry, Fred Andrews in episode one. And there were some good stuff to the season. Like I think Archie had a pretty good storyline while he was dealing with his grief and everything. Um, the Jughead Stonewall prep stuff was interesting enough, but there were also some things I did not like. Um, I did not like the Veronica and Hiram Wars and, and all of that. That was awful. Um, I did not like the serial killer genes with Betty. And, you know, that was kind of like all the way throughout the show, but um, did not like that because that was such a big thing in that season. I did not like how crazy Cheryl got. And I guess... Seasons four and five were rough for her character, for sure. I did not like how Tony basically had nothing to do. You know, it was just a pretty weak season. And as much as I like Betty and Archie together, I think the cheating was stupid. And I think they should have waited till the time jump and have the couples break up for a different reason and then have Betty and Archie together afterwards. I don't know. 
I, I think a lot of people said that the cheating ruined the show. And, and, and I think there's some truth to that, um, that it, it divided the fan base. And a lot of people quit watching after that. Um, you can notice a there's a noticeable difference between the viewership for one through four and five through seven. Viewership really dropped off. And I think the reason was is that they had um, the, the main two couples cheat on each other. And, you know, and I wasn't a fan of either couple, but I still think it was a mistake that they did that. So season four and they got cut short, but even so, it doesn't move any higher up on my list. It just wasn't a great season. OK, so fourth place, we have season three. Um, and then, you know, I think this season was kind of a mess, but not awful either. Um you know, I think the Gargoyle King thing was kind of stupid, but it was engaging enough, I guess. The Griffins and Gargoyles was also stupid. But it also had things I genuinely liked, like the Archie and Josie relationship was something I didn't know I needed, but it ended up being my favorite relationship that Archie was in, and just so good. She, she was so good for him. Um, was he good enough for her? Probably not, but... You know, I was so upset when she had to leave and it was so short lived. But another thing I love, I love the Veronica and Reggie stuff. Um, and, and, and mostly because um, they were at their peak that season. And I was disappointed when they wrote it in the way of, of Veronica using him. And I was disappointed with how their relationship unfolded in the later seasons. So I think it started off strong and ended badly. Um but I did like how they actually kind of switched the couples up during season three. You know, they didn't split up Betty and Jughead. But season four, for the most part, and season two, felt very consistent with the couples and the storylines that they were giving them. And season three did change things up a little bit. And I did appreciate that. They, they, they Season two, the main problem I had with it, which I'll talk about in a minute was how boring things got and season three did excite things more and cheryl and tony had a decent enough storyline as opposed to season four so i will give them that so in third place we have season two um and you know i think this season was um good not great or anything but you know it had the black hood mystery which was engaging enough it was a one of the better mysteries during the show um i think a complaint I had was how boring it felt, but it still had pretty consistent writing. Like, you were still engaged in who the Black Hood was, you were still engaged in the relationships between Archie and Veronica and Betty and Jughead, you were interested enough in the Hiram stuff, um, you know, characters like Kevin, like, and, you know, Cheryl, they were still likable enough, you know, and they introduced the Cheryl and Tony relationship, and, and all of that, and I think it was overall a good sophomore season to a show again not great but it was definitely better than season three because the writing was more consistent it was less of a mess um and it was mostly enjoyable to watch but again it was kind of boring some of the like i, I think maybe betty and archie they should have explored them during season two was probably what i would have preferred and maybe you know because maybe have them together for a season or so break them up i don't know um, but I just was not a big fan of season two, but it wasn't my least favorite either. So I'm like average on it. But the next two, starting with in second place, we have season six. And this was a very strong season. I was not expecting to like it this much. I love the Rivervale thing. I think that was so cool. And it was something so different for the show by introducing the supernatural side into things. Um, you know, the... The Cheryl Blossom episode with Sabrina was really good. The 100th episode was really good. In fact, one of my favorites. And the rest of the season turned out pretty strong. Like, you know, Betty and Archie had a great storyline. Veronica had a pretty good storyline, surprisingly. Cheryl had a good storyline with Heather um, and, you know, other stuff. The only, only downsides were that Kevin was annoying um, Reggie was annoying, and Tony and Fangs were kind of annoying in their own ways. So, like, I was not a big fan of those, but, oh, and Jughead and Tabitha were good as well. And I liked the superpowers aspect, too, because I think a lot of fans hated it, but I personally liked it, because, like, why not um, have the characters have superpowers? It's, it's, it's still more realistic than a lot of other stuff that's happened on this show. Like, why not step into 
that line. Like, why not step over it? Like, you're in your sixth season. I think it was a good choice, and it made things so much more interesting. So the final one, this should be pretty obvious, it's season one. Season one was so strong. It was so enjoyable to watch. I loved every part of it. I love the relationship between Betty and Jughead then. Um, I think the only downside was is that they had Archie's character pretty flat in season one, and I was not a fan of the affair with him and Miss Grundy. But besides that, it was very strong. Um, I think every character except maybe Archie was at their most likable during season one. Like, you were rooting for them. Um, you liked their character. I think the Jason Blossom mystery was so good and so compelling and the best mystery that they've done. Um, so, yeah, you can't top season one for me. It's it's a really good season of television, just how they, how they wrote it and everything. So, yeah, to kind of tie things up, um, I think this is overall a, a, not a great show. Um, it, it's an okay show. But I think there's good stuff that they've done throughout, and they, 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 they've tried throughout certain parts of the show. But then you have seasons like season five and season seven and even some of like three and four that the writers just did not know what they were doing. And it was it was awful. And like times were like, I just wanted to turn my TV off because of how stupid it was. Like there was this stuff like the church storyline with Cheryl and Kevin and season five was awful. I hated it. It was so cringe. But then there was like really good, meaningful stuff like the the Archie and Josie in season three was really good. Archie's whole grief storyline with his dad was really good. You know, Betty and Jughead's relationship for a, a while it was pretty good. You know, even um, Veronica and Reggie had a good spell before things turned toxic. You know, there there, there were so many good aspects of that show um, that it, it's you can't call it a bad show, but it's not a great show either. So. Yeah, that, that's just kind of my thoughts. But yeah, comment down below your ranking of the seasons of Riverdale. And yeah, again, happy one year anniversary of it ending. Um, it will always live on in my heart as an interesting show, to say the least. But it, it's still a good show. It's not one of my favorites. But like the characters are so near and dear to my heart. Some of them are at least. Um, but yeah. So yeah, I will see you guys soon. And bye, everyone.